every story appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories around the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Hello and good evening and welcome to Call TV News Primetime News. I am Sabena Izuku. In our major story, President Gula Jonathan Boost says a Dr. Schoolgirl Saga will mark the end of Boko Haram and terrorism in Nigeria. And also in this program, former head of state and APC chieftain Mohammed Buhari slams Boko Haram, describe members of the group as mindless bigots. Our Progressive Congress wants National Assembly to pull budgetary allocation to security. And outside Nigeria, United States vows to stop Iran's nuclear ambition in a meeting with Israel. Good evening once again and welcome to Core TV Primetime News, 9.45 p.m. The details. President Goodluck Jonathan is convinced that the abduction of hundreds of school girls from secondary school in Chibok, Borneo State, will mark the end of Boko Haram, so to see, in Nigeria. He made a declaration at the ongoing World Economic Forum uh, at Abuja. President Goodluck Jonathan based the convention on the level of cooperation and support Nigeria has been receiving in its effort to rescue the abducted school girls. It is the 24th edition of the World Economic Forum in Africa. And the expectation from the Nigerian authorities is that investment opportunities in the country would come on the global searchlight. Instead, the attention of the world is on the abduction of hundreds of schoolgirls taken from the dormitories by insurgents more than three weeks ago. This invariably ensured that security had to be discussed side by side with efforts to grow Africa's economy. It presented another opportunity for the Nigerian president to speak on global support to fund the girls. So it takes time for you to train uh, the people, it takes time for you to build the security architecture, and that is what we are improving on every day. Uh, not too long ago, uh, I gave a trip to a of over $1 billion for us to acquire. What we require? That it tells you not enough. Uh, but I'm just giving an example. Of course, uh, these challenges are good places. And I can guarantee that we should sure bring this uh, under reasonable, under control. Deliberations continued, and the leaders pondered on efforts to create jobs for African youths. Diversifying Africa's economy, which they say has been in limbo for so many years, is crucial for them. The way out, they say, is to create an enabling environment for private sector participation. And it's a major challenge to all of us. So that, that means that job creation is what most African leaders will occupy the better part of their uh, time thinking. Whatever they are sleeping or when they wake up, is how we create jobs for this number of unemployed youth the ones that will continue to enter the labor market. The capacity of institutions to deliver on what it needs to be delivered. In fact, here we have had uh, different collaborations with different institutions. Just one case we have uh, uh, worked with the Africa Governance Initiative, behind which is the former Prime Minister of the UK, Tony Blair. But this has just been to underscore the importance of capacity. Even the businesses were talking Africa's richest man, Aliko Dangote, was also on hand to share his experience. He wants the business community to pay attention to Africa. We used that and we went ahead and risked and invested a lot of our money. The biggest challenge that we are facing today is that some of us here in Africa will rather keep the money abroad 
not invest in Africa. And by doing that, you are not creating confidence. You have to invest your own money as an African to pay confidence for the foreigners to bring in their money. There can't be a more enhanced business environment on Earth better than Africa. If you think of the tax holidays, the tax breaks, if you think about the tax dodging, this place, business is making money and paying almost nothing for it. The forum continues on Friday with more interactions and discussions tailored around the theme, forging inclusive growth, creating jobs. President Goodluck, Jonathan has met behind closed doors in Abuja with the United States Ambassador to Nigeria, James N. Swissle. The meeting was held on the sidelines of the ongoing economic forum for Africa was meant to discuss the modalities for the actualization of the offer made by President Barack Obama to assist Nigerian rescuing the adopted school girls. According to a statement by Special Advisor to the President of Media and Publicity, Ruben Abati, the meeting was a follow-up to talks held on Wednesday between Ens Whistle and Nigerian security officials on the United States offer of assistance. Abati quoted the President as reiterating Nigerians' appreciation of the U.S. offer to deploy security personnel and assist and assess to work with the Nigerian counterparts in the search and rescue operation which was conveyed to him on Tuesday by the US Secretary of State John Kerry. The defense headquarters has denied media reports where the top leadership of the military was said to have admitted before the Bring Back Our Girls campaigners that it lacks the capacity to search for the abducted girls. The director of the defense information, Chris Olukolade, describes as unfortunate an alleged attempt by some people to use meeting between the defense authorities and the civil society campaigners to turn the public against the military. Olukolade says it is contrary to the training of the military to engage in bulk passing and acceptance to defeat as contained in the report. He added that the outcome of the meeting between the defense authorities and the group was misrepresented to paint the military in bad light and further heat of the polity. The All Progressive Congress has called on the National Assembly to urgently initiate a probe into how the budgetary allocation to the military have been spent in recent years. This is with a view to establishing whether or not the military is adequately in part to effectively tackle the worst in scorch or terrorism in the country. In a statement issued by Lagos by its interim national publicity secretary, Lai Mohammed, the party says the National Assembly, in the exercise of the constitutional duties, must invite service chiefs and all the relevant government officials to shed light on the issue. It says the probe is important because of the insinuation in certain quarters about the ability and the capability of the nation's military in the ongoing battle against Boko Haram. The party admonished the National Assembly not to be deterred by those who say military or security expenditure cannot be proved and those who will read political meanings to the call. Former military head of state Mohammed Buhari has described the members of the Boko Haram sect that has carried out several terrorist attacks in the country as mindless bigots and not followers of God. Buhari, who is also a chair of the All Progressive Congress, expressed great concerns over the abduction of the school girls. Meanwhile, condoling with the families whose girls were among those abducted, he described the abductors as a group of anarchists. He called on the federal government and the nation's armed forces to ensure citizen safety under the present situation. The Arawa Consultative Forum has copted the federal government for acting belatedly over the flight of the abducted school girls. The National Publicity Secretary of the ACF, Mohammed Ibrahim, noted in a statement that though the constitution of the Presidential Committee on a fact-finding mission to verify the number of girls and trace their whereabouts came too late, it was a good development considering the protests that greeted the earlier inactive posture of government. The organization welcomes the offer of assistance from the U.S., China, and Britain to rescue the adopted girls. It's called on the presidential committee without further delay, rescue of the girls. The abduction of over 200 school girls in Chibok, Warren State has continued to generate reactions and suggestions on how to take care of the adopted girls when they are eventually rescued. 
Olajumoke Olatunji spoke with two of the women and led the Bring Back Our Girls protest in Lagos. The reaction that followed recent adoption of over 200 schoolgirls of government girls secondary school Chibok has seen different approach and strategies being suggested. A psychologist and leader of one of the Lagos protest groups, St. Matthew Daniel, say rehabilitation is a better option for the adopted girls when they're eventually found. There are quite a lot of girls that have been taken away and the, uh, the, the focus should be in getting them back and in rehabilitating them psychologically and, phys and, uh, and, and physically. Emotions, they're traumatized and if not handled properly, it's going to affect them for, for throughout their lives. So I think we should talk, we should leave compensation to one side for the meantime. Let us compensate them emotionally. Let us rehabilitate them. Let us restore them. Let us renovate everything that has to be with them. St. Matthew Daniel said the emotional display by Patience Jonathan is outrageous and her attitude towards the Bring Back Our Girls protest does not appease true leadership. The president's wife, God bless her soul, uh, she didn't handle that whole scenario uh, properly. Uh, breaking down in front of the, 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 the world is not the best because she's the president's wife. She needs to be in a, in, in a controlled uh, uh, state of mind at all times. And then summoning people to come to her. I did ask, what are her powers? What are the... A legislative authoritative powers of a president's wife to summon people to come to her own domain I don't think that is proper at all she's the mother of the nation but then she's the leader of the pack too she must comport herself I feel like breaking down my tears are, are hanging here but because I have a lot of people that look up to me I must be strong I must show compassion and empathy without, you know, uh, breaking down and say, God, there is God. Oh. That is not, you know, that is not befitting of her position. For, for me, Kamala Fair denied allegations that the protest was politically sponsored and shows optimism to the involvement of the international community in fighting insurgency. No, I think um, it's not right to say that uh, the protests are political. Even if they are political, yes, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Human beings are involved. Human lives are involved. Politics is also about human life. So what's wrong with that? Is to put the government of the day on its toes and to get the government to know that, look, people are expectant. They want action. Nigerians have expressed optimism that intervention of the United States and other nations will bring an end to the insurgency. Olajumo Kelatsunji, Core TV News, Lagos. And still on the adopted girls, the recent adoption of over 200 school girls by the Boko Haram has attracted attention of the international community. The United States, Britain and France are among countries offering assistance in the area of technology and military presence. In spite of acceptance of the foreign intervention by the federal government, some say it may not yield a 100% result. Executive Director of Kudirat Initiative for Democracy, Amy Oyekunli, is optimistic that the experience of the European countries in fighting terrorism will yield results. Our foreign uh, intervention will probably come with more sophisticated tools, more sophisticated equipment that would help them if you can't get information from physical uh, sources from human beings, I'm sure there are other tools that they can use. And that is actually what I'm looking at because in truth, if the military, if the uh, foreigners come in, obviously there's going to be a hang up somewhere because people are, oh, people don't really trust foreigners, trust foreign, oh, these white people are coming in or whatever they are coming in. But I don't think and I don't see it that they will come in with troops and guns and everything. I think that it will be a much more covert kind of entry into it more like fact finding and things like that i think that that is what they have that we need mia kuli thanked nigerians for being their brother's keepers she also applauded the people for taking to the streets because it has yielded results by awakening the government to act it has showed our unity market women came out children came out 
mothers came out men came out it has shown that you know what everybody in one way or another was moved and is moved by this now of course and we are hoping that this protest will not dissipate uh, this spirit of activism will not dissipate one way or another it will go on but more importantly at the end of the day it has made the nigerian government sit up The Ekiti State Council of Obas, the umbrella body for traditional rulers in the state, has invited all experienced and political parties for a dialogue to ensure the peaceful conduct of the June governorship election. Rashid Rashid was there and filed in this report. Traditional institutions in Nigeria are synonymous to the promotion of peace among the people. The Ekiti State Traditional Council has taken a bold step to demand for a commitment from all aspirants of the contending political parties in the June 21st governorship election in the state to ensure peaceful conduct of the poll. <laughs> The candidates took turns to promise the royal fathers that they will promote and ensure that peace is sustained in Ekiti. All progressive Congress and on my own behalf, we would not condone violence, we would not be associated with it, but it is often very difficult in a manner of stress. It may not be difficult for me because I'm a, I'm a man of peace. We believe everybody has made pledges, everybody has made pledges on behalf of their parties, and we believe that uh, people will adhere strictly to this. Some of the candidates expressed hope that a traditional ruler's call will be given all seriousness by the politicians. I've made a pledge, and I will stand by it. I will not get involved in violence. I want God to make me if it's the will of God. If it's God's will that I will be governor again, let it be. In another wise move, a wise move on the part of critical stakeholders in the state. Ah, this is not the first of such meetings we'll be having. Uh, hope and prayer is that this meeting would achieve the purpose for which it was called. A representative of the Independent National Electoral Commission appreciated the efforts of the traditional rulers, saying all hands are now on deck to ensure that the governorship election is free and fair. Part of what the commission is doing uh, has been to go here and there to appeal to people to accommodate peace. And we have been saying it tirelessly that we are out to exhaust all peace-oriented uh, programs and uh, events to ensure that we have peace during the governorship election in Ekiti State. Recent events in Ekiti State has only but proven that the peaceful conduct of the governorship election in the state remains the first priority. If you're just tuning in, you're watching Call TV Primetime News at 9.45 p.m. We'll just take a short break and when we return, the news at 9.45 continues. Stay with us. I don't think the election the same was What are the people saying? Uh, five local government out of the Tadimu local government is more than many states in the north. The economy is booming. Where is the economy booming? Bomb blast in Abuja. Don't do have security. Why are we fighting? President should not just sit in Abuja or in Asukoro or wherever he lives. They're not transporting the local around. They know them. Men cannot be there and be there at the same time. The life of the citizens, community need to be protected. It's going to count. Spread the message of peace. Let there be proper devolution of power from the center. The center is too powerful. The people only on Core TV News.